Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to do things a little bit different. We're going to get out of the shop floor and we're going to work in our office here and go over some paperwork stuff. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is basically discussing the process of how to obtain your aircraft airworthiness. And this is going to be done in two different steps. Uh, aircraft registration being the first one and then the airworthiness being the second one. Two, two different things, same uh, paperwork package basically. So starting in the beginning, air Craft registration is going to be done by first reserving our end. To reserve your end number, you must first go to the FAA.gov website. Next, under aircraft, click on aircraft certification. And then in the middle column under aircraft registration, click on renew a reserved end number. Next, you click on the left hand side under reserve a end number. And this brings you to the page at which you would select up to five end numbers in order of your preference. And once you do that, click the proceed with request button. The second portion of your aircraft registration is going to be the aircraft registration application. We will utilize our computer website browser and type in form 8050-1. That will bring us to the FAA.gov website and at the bottom we're going to click on aircraft registration application PDF. There under form 8050-1 we will begin with our registered and reserved end number. Box 2 will be aircraft manufacturer and model. Box 3 will be the aircraft serial number and we will obtain a serial number from our aircraft manufacturer. Box four is type of registration, whether it's individual, partnership, or corporation. Box five will be the name of applicant or applicants, starting with your last name, first name, and middle initial. Box six is your telephone number. Box seven is your permanent mailing address of the first applicant on the list. Box eight is only if you have a PO box. Box nine, we will not worry about because we're not changing our address. Box 10 is certification. If you're a US citizen, you wanna click on A and check that box. Down at the bottom of, of box 11, we want to sign our name, date it, print our name, and under title, place buyer. While filling out your aircraft registration application, be sure to obtain your aircraft bill of sale. Your aircraft bill of sale will look something similar to this, and it will be obtained from your aircraft manufacturer. The manufacturer of your aircraft will populate your aircraft bill of sale. Both original documents, once populated, will then be mailed to the address on the 8050-1 form. So this completes part one or step one, aircraft registration. We will begin with form 8130-6, application for US airworthiness certificate. You can Google search just the form number 8130-6 and pull up a fillable PDF online. On this form, the registration mark will be your N number. The builder's name is going to be yours as shown on your registration card, whether that be first last name or last name first name. The model designation, of course, will be your aircraft model. The year of manufacture is going to be the year you've completed the build and are scheduling your DAR inspection. Uh, serial numbers, of course, your um, aircraft serial number, which you can receive from your manufacturer the build engine builder's name and engine model designation are the uh, make and serial number. The same as the propeller's builder's name being the make and the model designation being the serial number. Number eight, you will have to place the amount of engines you have, typically being one. In part two, certification requested, the majority of you will be experimental and you will have to place a check mark in box number four there. To the right of that, you will need to select whether you are amateur built, exhibition, uh, air racing, however you are building your aircraft. 
the majority of you will be an amateur build. On part three, owner certification, the name is going to be as shown on your registration card as well as your address. Under the aircraft specification or type uh, cert certificate data sheet, you need to place NA as well as under aircraft listing. Under the supplemental type certificate, be sure to place NA unless for some reason you have one of those. And the airworthiness directives can be found on the FAA website. You need to place in the most current AD number available when scheduling your DAR inspection. To locate the most updated airworthiness directive number you will need for the airworthiness certificate application, you will go to the FAA.gov website. From there, on the center of the page, you will see airworthiness directives AD current only. Click on that link, which will bring you to the most current AD number at the top. Right now it is 2020-17-03. That would be the number you'd enter in the box labeled airworthiness directives. We will now jump back to the form 8130-6 and we will enter that airworthiness directive number we just looked up on the FAA website, which was 2020-17-03. Um, from there, we're going to move on to Part C. Uh, airframe hours is, of course, going to be zero. And under the experimental only, you will also need to put zero. Uh, be sure to put the 0, 0.0 as well uh, when filling that out. The date of the application you are filling it out, the name and title as shown on your registration again. So first name, last name, or last name, first name. And by title, they are referring to you being the builder of the aircraft. So you would enter builder. If for some reason you are the co-owner of this aircraft, you would want to state co-owner in this section as well. Uh, go ahead and print this page and sign, and we will move on to the next application. We are going to do form 8130-12 now. Again, you can just Google that form number take you to the FAA website, which will give you a fillable PDF online. This is uh, the eligibility statement amateur built aircraft form. Part one is just going to be the registered owner information as shown on your aircraft registration as far as your name, address, and a telephone number that you can be reached at. Part two is all the information required from your aircraft, which will be your model, the serial number received from your manufacturer, your end number, your engines make and serial number, as well as your props make and serial number. You will need to check whether it is a plan or a kit aircraft. And then part three, you will just need to place your name in here um, as certifying that you are the builder of the aircraft. If you built this yourself, did not use a builder's assist, you will need to place NA on each of these lines in the center because you are the sole builder of that uh, aircraft. So just make sure all six of these say NA. This is a form that needs to be notarized. So before you sign this, be sure you set up with the notary. They will need to see your signature in person in order to put their statement on there. Now we are going to go over the amateur built fabrication and assembly checklist. You will need to have this completed to be able to send in with the packet of all of the other paperwork we are doing for your airworthiness certificate in order for the DAR to inspect your aircraft. Uh, every aircraft might be a little different. There is an amateur built fabrication assembly checklist you can search from the FAA website if your manufacturer does not have one. On your screen currently, I have one that is set specifically to a sling two uh, that we use for all of our Builders Assist customers. This, these uh, spreadsheets are done in one tenth of a fraction. So each line needs to equate to an entire point. Um, you will have it broken down on what comes pre-done by the manufacturer, whether in the kit or a component done and built for you already. And then you will need to fill out the amateur builder assembly portion or the amateur build fabrication portion. Those are highlighted in green. 
you will see as I've already filled out on line 32. Uh, fabricate fuselage covering or uh, skin. It has 0.9 done from the manufacturer already, so we need at least 0.1 had to have been done by the amateur builder to give it its entire point. Um, if you go further down, you can look at the canopy where it's 0.8. That would obviously mean 0.2 had been completed. Uh, once you fill out all of these, uh, the entire list throughout your entire build, the bottom of it will have a population. Uh, ours automatically does the math for us. Uh, you, it gives the directions on how to do it yourself if needed. Ours already does it to make sure that you come out to your percentage needed to hit an amateur built experimental aircraft. As well on this checklist, it is always a good idea to take multiple pictures throughout the entire span of your build of you doing the work on the aircraft. Uh, this will be in handy in case the DAR ever asks for proof other than a checklist that you have completed these tasks. One of the last things we'll go over is a program letter. This needs to accompany your application for your airworthiness certificate. It will all be one packet that you'll mail out to your local DAR agent. Um, and so it's just a quick yes or no questionnaire to verify that you have all the proper paperwork and documents required to schedule your inspection. Uh, in the top middle, we're just going to put your builder name, model, number of engines, your registration number, serial number, the amount of seats, and then you need to check box whether it's your own design, built from plans, or built from a kit. We'll just go over this line by line. Uh, the first one, of course, is FAA Form 8130-6. They require sections one, two, and three to be complete. Uh, over to your right, that is your application for a US Airworthiness Certificate. Section one I have highlighted as well as two and three. We have previously filled those out. You'll make sure your signature is on there. Uh, and next one is FAA Form 8130-12. Again, sections one, two, and three uh, highlighted. We have filled those out and this one needs the notarization on the bottom. As well, the DAR inspector and FAA will require three view drawings or photographs of the aircraft. You should be able to get those from your PO, POH or you can ask your manufacturer for them. Every aircraft needs a weight and balance. Again, something it might be in your POH or you'll have to ask your uh, manufacturer for, but you'll need to weigh your aircraft once it's complete to get that. You also need to maintain your construction log, uh, including photographs of the construction that uh, you can use the assembly checklist as I had discussed on the FAA website, unless your manufacturer has something specific for your aircraft. You will also need to have the form 8050-3, which is the actual hard copy of your registration. You need to have that in hand before you schedule your inspection with your DAR agent. A few other things that are required inside the aircraft, uh, right here, you will need to have a sticker or a plaque card stating experimental, if your aircraft is experimental, near the entrance to the cabin or cockpit. As well, you will need a plaque card that reads a passenger notice. This aircraft is amateur built and does not comply with federal safety regulations for standard aircraft. A few other things that you're gonna need to note and have in there is your, in um, your instrument panel. If you need any range markings or apical operation limitations, that those are installed. And they will need an equipment list. That can be uh, just a little Word document typed up with all of your instruments, their part numbers, and their serial numbers. And you'll need to check over here whether it is VFR, IFR, uh, VFR day and night, or IFR operations. Every aircraft, of course, needs an ELT. You need to certify yes or no that you've installed that. And then the engine needs at least one hour of ground operation at various speeds from idle to full. This is just to determine that all systems are operating properly. And then you also need to make a logbook entry in the engine logbook associating that this operation has been completed. If you are um, building your aircraft for aerobatics, be sure to circle yes here. Uh, the type certif certificated as well. Um, if you are circle yes, most of you will be no. We have to verify that all ADs for the engine, propeller, and appliances have been complied with. You'll circle yes on this. This is also something we did on our first form, 8130-6, where we looked up the most current AD number and filled that out. 
The aircraft logbook has to have a statement in it as well, something similar to this, certifying that this aircraft has been inspected by, in accordance with the scope and detail of, uh, and that it is found to be in condition for safe operation. Your DAR agent will want to see that logbook entry in there before they arrive. Uh, as well, you will need a flight test plan developed. Uh, most of you should be able to receive that from your manufacturer or it might be in your POH. This is a similar one we have for the Sling aircraft. Uh, other than that, you just need to fill out that you are requesting your airworthiness certificate. Uh, you have all of your limitations. Everything is set. You're going to be night, uh, day or night VFR or IFR conditions. You're going to request that your limit be uh, 25 nautical mile, mile radius from the center of the airport you will be flying your 40 hours off at. This happens, to, Caro happens to be hours, so it'll be similar to this with your location. They require a phone number they can reach you at, uh, work number if you have two different numbers, and an email address. Of course, sign this. All of the paperwork that we went, discussed at the top needs to be piled into one packet and it will be mailed directly to your DAR agent. Uh, another form that you might get could look similar to this is inspection paperwork. It's just another checklist to verify again that you have everything required for your inspection. Uh, you could attach this if, if you wanted and mail it to your DAR. Most of them will just need the program letter. As you guys have seen, the two-part process of the aircraft registration and airworthiness certification can be quite cumbersome and there's a lot of detail, but hopefully this video helps you. But before you do all that and before we go, just please keep in mind that you're going to have to go to the uh, FAA, awc.faa.gov website and click on the airworthiness certification applicant portal. And basically what this is, is this you creating a portal and what you're going to have to do is create an application and then scan all of your documents, all the documents that we just discussed. And so that'll kind of give you a digital paper copy for that FAA. So it'll be that and then all the things that we discussed. So hopefully this video helps you guys in uh, obtaining your airworthiness cert certification for your aircraft.